Hello, I'm Luke Coasters, and in this video I'll be continuing the series in which I review my top 20 coasters, and this review is of my 12th favourite coaster, Twisted Colossus, an RMC iBox coaster at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Twisted Colossus replaced the original Colossus, a huge wooden racing coaster at Six Flags Magic Mountain. When Colossus was first announced to close, many were disappointed as it was such a beloved ride, but mostly people were excited as it meant that we'd be seeing the first duelling RMC. When the layout was revealed in 2014, no one was disappointed at all. When the coaster opened on May 23rd, 2015, it received over overwhelmingly positive reviews and it has done ever since. Statistically the coaster wasn't too impressive even for an RMC, only having two inversions, a max height of 121 feet and a top speed of 57 miles per hour. But what was impressive was the length of this coaster, which was 4,990 feet, which was at the time RMC's longest coaster, and it held that record until Steel Vengeance opened in 2018 which has a track length of 5,740 feet. I was fortunate enough to ride Twisted Colossus in April 2017, and it was my first RMC so I went in unsure on what to expect, but coming off I was blown away by the overall experience. The coaster was well presented, its green and blue colour scheme looks great and helps make the two sides stand out. The area that the coaster is in is also really well presented, and the queue line has decent theming. The station however lacks any good theming, but what is nice is that you can choose your own row, and the trains you get in look great with some nice details. As you can probably tell from my last year reviews, I love the first gen RMC trains which I know isn't a common opinion, but I don't mind the shin guards and I like how it's fairly easy to get room on them. When I went to Six Flags Magic Mountain, the ride stop didn't staple, allowing me to enjoy some room on this coaster, which definitely helped my experience with it. But unfortunately when I went, I was only able to get one dueling experience out of my six rides. This is less of a problem with the ride ops, but instead with the guests, who were very slow at guessing on the ride. This was worsened by the bins on the ride platform, meaning guests had to walk over the train to place their bags in the bins, which they were slow in doing. It's hard to make a system like this on a quasi Mobius layout work as it relies so much on timing, but honestly I wasn't too bothered by it not dueling, and even the one time it did duel, it didn't really enhance the experience much for me, and the layout was good enough to hold its own without the dueling aspect. Once the coaster dispatches into the blue side, the train navigates a left hand turn which is broken up by a straight section in the middle. The train then goes into a small shallow drop which leads into 5 consecutive bunny hills. The first two is regular bunny hills which aren't banked and they give no force at all, but then the next hill is banked to the left, which is followed by a hill banked to the right, but both of the hills lack any forces. It just feels like the train is rocking from side to side while going through these hills. There is one more tiny bunny hill which again gives no force at all. The pre-lift section is nothing amazing, however it is a fun way to start the ride and actually get to the lift hill, and it's definitely better than a long straight run to the lift hill. But since then RMC has improved their pre-lift sections so that they have more force and are more thrilling. The train then goes through a right hand turn and then it ascends into the lift hill. Like most RMCs which have speed going into the lift hill, the ride jolts to a stop after attaching to the chain. The train then continues going up the slow lift hill which gives a good view of the park to the right. Usually while going up the lift hill, the other train is also ascending. But most times I rode, the train was either much farther ahead or much further behind. After a while, the train reaches the crest of the lifter, which is so sharp. And then the train plummets at 80 degrees down the 128 foot drop. This drop also twists slightly to the right while descending. And all of this makes for one of the best drops on any RMC. The airtime is so powerful and aggressive and the crest is so sharp. And the airtime also feels fairly sustained considering the drop is only 128 foot. In terms of airtime strength, this is one of RMC's best drop. And this is added to by the snappy transition into the airtime and the surprising laterals which push you to the left while descending. This myriad of forces makes the drop so intense, and a great way to start the ride. The bottom of the drop lacks positives, but it still keeps up a fast pace, and while low to the ground, the train traverses a speed hill. The hill is taller and more pronounced than any other RMC speed hills, making it my favourite one of these elements on an RMC coaster. It actually has ejector which is fairly strong, and the size also means that you can feel the airtime as it isn't over too fast, unlike how it feels on most RMCs. This moment allows you to enjoy the sensation of speed at 57 miles per hour, while also experiencing a powerful moment of ejector. The train then climbs up into a fairly large hill which leads into the raised up section, and when cresting this hill you get some fairly strong ejector. The descent is much shorter than the ascent, meaning that the airtime isn't the most sustained considering the size of the ascent. However, the airtime moment still lasts for around a second. The train flies through this hill, and in the front you get launched out of your seat from the moment the train starts cresting to the base of the descent. In the back, the airtime is slightly less aggressive and also less sustained, as you don't really get airtime until cresting over the top of the hill. The train then banks to the left and navigates a 90 degree left hand turn. Towards the end of this turn, the train rises up and banks 90 degrees in a sort of wave turn like element, except the element doesn't really turn back in itself, so you don't have much airtime. There is a slight pop of airtime when exiting this hill, but it isn't too noticeable. The overall element is fun having soft laterals which push you to the right, 
but overall it lacks strong forces. The train then banks to a shallower angle and navigates another 90 degree left turn, and towards the end of this element the train rises up and banks to 0 degrees. The train then plummets down a fairly large drop giving amazing sustained ejector. In the front row the airtime is just solid ejector, nothing too outstanding, but in the back you are dragged down the drop and flung violently out of your seat with some really strong ejector. The airtime doesn't quite match the insane ejector of Storm Chase or even Twisted Cyclone, but really it isn't too far off, and it's way stronger than the average on RMCs. While descending, you fly under the track of the double down on the green side, and some of the ledges and supports give great head choppers, which feel way too close, especially since you're being launched upwards and towards them in this insane airtime moment. I honestly love the feeling of diving into the structure, and this moment is definitely the best moment on the coaster outside of the two drops. Just because of the sheer power that the airtime has, and the fact that it's so sustained, giving almost two seconds of amazing quality ejector. The train then exits the structure and rises into a second speed hill. This particular element is definitely better than the first speed hill. While it doesn't quite match the sensation of speed felt on the first hill, the airtime in this moment is much stronger. The hill is around the same height, but much more compact. This means that the entrance and the exit to this hill are much more pronounced, so naturally the hill will give stronger airtime. The airtime on this speed hill is slightly more aggressive and powerful, and surprisingly it's also more sustained. And I believe this is because the train is travelling slightly slower over the element, making the airtime last for longer. After that, the train rises up into another, much larger hill. This hill is very different to most of RMC's more sustained hills, as this hill is shorter but more drawn out. I'd say this makes the airtime less aggressive, as the build up into the airtime moment takes longer, but when it has built up to the ejector, it's fairly good. The airtime is pretty strong, it feels similar in strength to the previous speed hill, but RMC has definitely made stronger ejector. However, it's still a fun and fairly aggressive element. The airtime is also pretty sustained, with the airtime lasting just over a second. It's so much fun being thrown out of your seat for over a second, all while having a zero G still going over you. The thing I'd say is, these more drawn out sustained hills work better when they're larger, such as those on Skyrush or x and G-Force, but I understand why they shaped this hill like they did, as they had to fit it under the stool above. And I'd say it's worth it, especially when you're duelling. I'd actually say that this is the best interaction when the rider is duelling, as if you look up, you can see the people inverted above you, or if you're on the green side looking down, you can actually see the people below you, and this is almost a surreal experience. After exiting this hill, the train rises up into the first inversion, a zero G roll. This inversion is nothing special, it has decent laterals throughout, but not any airtime or hang time, making it feel average. It feels almost identical to the final inversion on Twisted Cyclone, so it really isn't anything special. You then enter a double up. In the front, the first hill gives a brief moment of solid ejector, which pushes you up for under a second, but in the back, the airtime strength is just decent floater. However, the second hill is much better. The airtime is fairly weak ejector, but it's still fun. You're pushed out of your seat for just under a second while banking to the left giving some weak laterals on the descent. This hill is definitely better in the back, as the airtime is slightly stronger, but in the front it isn't too much worse. The train continues navigating a descending left-hand turn, but halfway through the train rises up and banks to the right and traverses a drawn-out outward bank turn. This element gives solid floater in all rows, but the moment isn't too sustained so you can't really enjoy the floater. When exiting this hill, the train suddenly banks to the left, giving a good moment of laterals which whips you to the right. The laterals then persist but are slightly weaker as you continue navigating the left hand turn which leads into a break run which marks a halfway point of this ride. These final few elements on the blue side are definitely more toned down than those earlier in the ride and for me it definitely detracts from the otherwise amazing pacing. While the elements are still great it just isn't quite as aggressive to the elements prior. The train then enters the lifter which is where the green side starts. You return to the top again and go through another very similar drop. Like on the previous lap this drop is insane. I'd say the airtime and laterals feel slightly strong on this side but on the whole it's pretty much the same. The right then enters the speed hill which is an exact replica of the previous one and the forces are exactly the same. The train then rises up into the raised up section, however the descent following the hill is much smaller than on the blue side so the airtime strength in the front is pretty similar but in the back it's much weaker, only being strong floater. And this moment is much less sustained as well. Though the train starts turning much earlier, the left hand turn is much tighter as well, giving mild laterals when entering the turn. The train then rises up and suddenly backs to 90 degrees to the right, giving a strong moment of laterals which whips you to the side. The train then exits this element and suddenly backs to the left, giving a decent pop of ejector and good laterals which push you to the right side of the train. After exiting this whippy element, the train enters a turn to the left and rises up into a double down. The first of this double down has decent ejector on the front, which is slightly stronger in the back, while also banking to the right, giving a good moment of laterals which push you to the left. The train then flattens out before dipping down again, giving a weak moment of ejector in all rows. This second descent also has some mild laterals which nudge you to the right, making for an overall fun element, but nothing insane. The train then rises up going into the zero G stall, and the transition going into it is really snappy, especially in the front row, and the hang time is decent, but as the train is flying so fast, it isn't too great. The exit of the stall is even better, it has decent laterals and whips you to the side, making for an overall snappy element, which really throws you around. 
You then bank to the right and rise up a twisted hill, which twists to the left slightly too early, so there's pretty much no airtime, but decent laterals which push you to the right with a fair amount of force. But the fact that this element is devoid of airtime is disappointing. The train then rises up into a double up, which is the same as on the blue side, and then the train rises up even higher giving a brief moment of floater on the front, while turning to the left. And then it navigates one more small hill which leads into the brakes, but unfortunately it has no airtime. So overall this ride is really fun, having a few amazing moments, but the airtime on the whole is nothing special for an RMC. But most of the airtime moments deliver at least solid ejector, with the exception of the finale of both sides, which both have weak double ups, and the elements after that are also poor. This harms the pacing of the coaster, however I was still able to enjoy the first halves of each side, and the fact that you get to navigate some of the best elements twice make it even better. I also love the duration of this ride, you definitely feel satisfied with the length going off the ride, however that does come at the cost of the pacing in the final section of each half, but the other amazing elements make up for that. It would be nice if they could make it dual more often as well, but it didn't harm the ride too much for me, and despite this the ride is so much fun to just loop, so overall I give Twisted Colossus a score of 95 out of 100. It's a great coaster but the pacing stops it from being perfect, so I'd love to hear your opinions on Twisted Colossus and I'd appreciate it if you liked and subscribed for more roller coaster based content.